what's the effect of climate change on the uh, on the Amazon? Maybe species diversity. What 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 is something that people should should think about? Because there's different views on. Um, I think most people believe that climate change is human caused and that it's happening, but there is different perspectives on the degree of damage that it's going to do over the next several decades and what our response should be as a society. And so it would be amazing to hear your perspective on it in, in, in small slices of your experience or in large. To me, there's no denying the fact that we are experiencing changes. I think anybody that, that doesn't agree with that hasn't been outside in the last 20 years or hasn't interviewed old farmers who will tell you that it changed or, you know, it's, it, that, I think a lot of us can agree with that. Where I deviate is that I am not a climate scientist. I am, I am not qualified. And so I, just like everybody else, am listening. And what happens to me is I see that the, Someone like Santiago Duran, JJ's father, will will tell me it's totally different than it was when I was a kid. The seasons have changed and moved. And like in New York, when I was a kid, like we used to get like white Christmas. Like we used to get snow. We don't, I was in shorts. Like I came off the plane right before coming here and I was in like shorts for a second. Like I was like, this is a different reality. But my ability could, my or my my interpretation of climate change you know, I feel like it's just as dumb as those people that go like, you know, it's really cold. I thought they said it was getting warmer. It's like, it's it's a very rudimentary thing. And so as a, as a, someone that's fighting for the preservation of biodiversity, I, I, I don't feel like I'm any more qualified than the average person to, I can only provide anecdotal, anecdotal evidence of the stuff I've seen. What I, what I do do though, and I always, I always make a strong delineation here is that I can speak to the fact that I've been places where the ocean fisheries have been depleted and the local fishermen can tell you, and the scientists can tell you, there's no more fish here. I've been to the places where the rainforest line is being pushed back in Borneo and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I've been in the Amazon and I've walked through the killing fields and through the fires and I've burnt my lungs on it. And, and I'm a big believer personally in, in, instead of trying to take on all of it, I've tried very hard in my life to pick one thing. And to me, that one thing is protecting as many wild heartbeats as I can because they're under constant fire. And so climate change you know there's so much arguing over it and and like you said the, the the degree to which we we affect it and 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 how do you you know what i mean like i like to have provable data points like you know i can show you tropical deforestation i can show you the decline in tigers over the last hundred years i can't prove to, i you know what i mean like i can't answer that question i don't think if, if, probably you can better than i can no i i think one of the criticisms I'd love to get your opinion on is uh, one of the criticisms that somebody like Jordan Peterson provides yeah. is that the climate is such a complex system. There's so many variables that making conclusive statements about what's going to happen with the quote unquote climate in the next 10, 20, 50 years yeah. is a nearly impossible uh, task. Therefore, as he would say, as as people like Bjorn Lomberg would say, the kind of fear mongering that is done, saying yeah. we should spend humongous amounts of money to change the trajectory of everything we're doing in terms of energy, um, in terms of infrastructure and so on, in terms of how we allocate money is not justified because predicting is very difficult. And instead it's better exactly what you're saying, which is uh, focusing on local problem, <laughs> local, saying, uh, we need to protect the Amazon. What are the what are the things attacking the Amazon this year? In the next five years, how can we stop the deforestation? How can we stop different things? And then and then and the humans are exceptionally good in, um, at coming up with solutions for that. Especially when you put money behind it, you put attention to it, and that's the way we solve all the different problems that are going to. Um, that are projected for the climate change in its worst case scenarios 
uh, to be realized on this earth. So that, that that's kind of the, the case he would make. And I should also mention that one of the reasons I was fortunate enough to discover your work is um, first a friend mentioned that I should definitely talk to you. And then I Googled you and I saw that somebody recommended that Jordan Peterson absolutely must talk to you on his oh, podcast. Wow. Um, I think that's it was like honor. a Reddit post. Right? Yeah. Thank you, Reddit poster. <laughs> that's, that's great. And I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah. And then I looked and Jordan hasn't yet. I thought was, <laughs> my goal is for you to talk to, to, to Rogan and, and to Jordan Peterson for, for different reasons, but for the same reason. They get connected to uh, a human being that deeply cares about this earth. And I think that's probably the right lens through which to look at the effects of climate change. Um, in terms of focusing on the different things that are threatening, threatening the diversity of species in this most magical place on earth, which is the Amazon, but also as you will talk about with, with elephants and tigers in India and focusing on how to solve those problems. I don't know if there's any comment you wanna make on uh, folks like Jordan Peterson who are sort of raising questions about how much do we really understand about the climate? Yeah, first of all, I'm such a Jordan Peterson fan, and I think the guy is heroic for a number of reasons. And I, I find his his use of language and his use of theology and and the message that he puts out wonderful. Um, I cringe a little bit when he says, I, I feel like, and I, I might not even be accurate on this, but I, I cringe a little bit when I feel like he dis, he dismisses that there is an ecological emergency happening right now. Now I'm not saying I'm not talking about climate change specifically, but I've I've heard him say, you know, environmentalists upset me and he goes, "Well, what do you mean by the environment? Everything?" and it sort of yeah. seems to outrage him and it's and I I I kind of agree with him there mm -hmm. because so are you telling me that we need to halt our global process and 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 progress and economies and everything? I don't know. I don't know. And so so to me um I I don't that doesn't bother me because he's exploring what the hell are these people talking about? When you say you have, I have, I personally have friends and students and people filling my inboxes. I have young kids telling me that they're, they've become vegan and they ride a bicycle and sometimes they don't watch TV because it uses electricity. And they're, I mean, they're just becoming so, so terrified of, of that they're killing the earth. And so it's this doomsday anti-human sentimentist yeah. thing that we're, that we're evil. It's like it's almost like a new religion about you're evil, and so to me, I, it almost makes me it, in a in a totally different camp. Where like climate change and the right left politics, and you know, I, I can sit at a family, I can sit at Thanksgiving dinner and listen to listen to the the climate thing go back and forth. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I'm not even I'm not even here, and that might actually annoy some people in the environmental field that might feel betrayed by me saying that, but I don't care. Uh, my job, and it's not just the Amazon, and, and that's one note that I wanted to make, is that my career has, has taken place largely in the Amazon and also in India, and now a lot in Africa, but it's, it's not even just these exotic places either. It's, it's, it's people realizing that you know, the salmon runs in Canada and the, the butterfly gardens in our backyards, that there's biodiversity everywhere. And it's and I, I strongly feel like you know the idea of jungle keepers, the idea of 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 stewards of nature. And so for me, my 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 job, my one thing, and I I try to tell this to these kids that message me and that my my inboxes are full of this, where they go, you know, the climate is burning and elephants are in decline and tigers and and this and that. I'm like, I'm like guys, look, first of all, pick, calm down. First of all, like mm -hmm. go outside, go get laid, do something, have fun. Next. Pick something that you can affect. And it doesn't have to be with the environment. Do something good on earth. Go help somebody that needs food. Go help your elderly neighbor, whatever it is. Practice practice with being effective at one thing at a time. And so for me, like I said, from those early days of sitting there with JJ on the side of a river and going, someone has to protect this. Um, my concern is that we've lost 70% of the wildlife on this planet in the last 50 years. That's a huge problem. Wildlife maintain the ecosystems. And so I have a very clear cut, very definable, very measurable and provable thing that I'm fighting against. And it's a very, to me, it's a very like small ask. Don't cut down the 3% of the world that has 50% of the biodiversity in it. Maybe let's keep some wild tigers for future generations and because tigers have a, their own inherent right to exist here. 
that's my thing in terms of when we get to, you know, I get attacked for, you know, you should be a vegan. Okay. You show, you, you have me roll into a village in the Amazon when they offer me spider monkey and you tell me that I should be a vegan and you, you see how much they respect you and you tell them that you're a vegan. Like, um, but no, so for someone like Peterson, I think it's actually good that he's, first of all, telling everyone to make their damn beds and, uh, and, and exploring it through a different lens. You know, he's, he's coming at it from a totally different thing and saying, you know, it, are, are we just being alarmist here? Are we, what, I mean, again, imagine if, you know, the, imagine if there isn't a problem and they're, then they're making one out of it and all the implications that that could have for progress. It's like, so I think what he's doing is, is perfectly reasonable. Um, there is a podcast though, where he's, he's, it was a great one though, where he's, he's discussing animal intelligence mm -hmm. and, and I could really see that, that, you know, the human psyche and theology and, and religion is so much his world that, mm -hmm. That the the really the the idea of animals being intelligent was novel and it was and it was fascinating. Yeah, that's that's why that I would love for the two of you to talk. Just I don't know, and I hopefully I'm not out of line here, but he is so focused on the human mind that I think he forgets that there's other life out there. There's this whole do. machine of intelligence, of a kind of intelligence out there. Yeah. Uh, th th this entire trillions of species, tiny and big, just crawling, uh, and just moving and everywhere. Everywhere. And we're actually part of it. So like to look at a human psychology as distinct from that is missing at least some of the picture. Some of the picture. I do believe though, I would agree with him on that humans are unique. Yeah. Human psychology is unique. We just are. But, but, I also, you know, it's, it's, he's in such an interesting s place because usually you have, you know, environmentalists who are like, you know, nature, 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 and then you, and that's very anti-human. Mm -hmm. And then you have the other side and it's like, he's, he's, he's on this path where he's, he's starting to explore what those like diverse intelligences mean. And that, that to me is really amazing because I love hearing what he'll do with that. And I think also on top of that, I think if you're aware of nature, deeply aware of nature, it gives you another perspective on the evolutionary history of humans. Like, yeah. It's one thing to be an evolutionary biologist and kind of study it from a like philosophical perspective, and it's the other to really, I think, experience it and deeply know it to see, I don't know, to, <laughs> to, the fact that we came from fish sure. and really be cognizant of that. That's something else. That's like, I don't know, uh, to, to realize that we're part of a, computing machine that created intelligence. We're part, we're part of the thing that started bacteria and is now creating AI.